Are you looking to buy a budget camera to make your own online videos? Well, today we're gonna unbox and do some initial impressions and just try out the brand new Canon EOS M200. What comes in the box? Could it potentially work for you? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So I am so excited, I love these. The EFM uh, just a few weeks ago, a few months ago was not very strong. It didn't have a lot of options out there and then Sigma released their crop sensor lenses for the EFM mount and basically took the EFM and made it very, very powerful. So I wanted to try out the M200 and I would like to say before we crack this box open, thanks to my friends over at B&H Photo for loaning me this camera for the next couple of weeks so we can make this series of videos on. If you'd like to get your very own, there will be links in the description below. But that's enough, let's crack this sucker open. Now if you remember, we tried the M100 out uh, a few months ago, like a year ago. It was a lot, I don't know, all this time compresses. Uh, and I really liked it, it didn't have all the features, but it was on the budget side and it had a good enough image quality. So we get the, you know, the literature, cause you gotta learn. You gotta learn how to use it. I never, I never read the books. <laughs> We've got the, the limited warranty, the Canadian warranty, and the United States warranty. They, they can't share the same. They can't share the same. We gotta have them on separate, separate pages. But ooh, look at that. You get different, you get, it's like a book. You can explore, learn, and create. But then you gotta send in your warranty card. So then you can't learn how to explore, learn, and create. Okay, what do we got in the box? We've got the battery charger, which every single time I unbox a camera, I was I like to mention this because Canon always includes a charger. And you may be like, well, of course, there's a battery, you've gotta have a way to charge it. But so many brands don't give you battery chargers. GoPro no longer gives you a battery charger. Sony doesn't give you a battery charger. They expect you to like plug your camera into the wall, which I like having an external battery charger. So thank you, Canon. Thank you, I appreciate this. What else do we got? We've got the, well, you know, we have the charger, now we need the actual battery, right? What do we have? What kind of battery are we rocking here? This is the LPE12 battery. Looks small, it is an 875 milliamp hour lithium ion battery. It is pretty small. Um, I believe this is the same one that is in the M100. We got the version with the kit lens, and I'm not a very, I don't think this is a very good kit lens. The EFM 15 to 45, there are better kit lenses out there, and in this day and age, when the kit lens is starting to be a significant piece of glass, the GH5's 12 to 60 is a fantastic kit lens, the X-T3's kit lens is amazing, the Z6's kit lens is amazing. Uh, it's not that I don't like when kit lenses are bad. I like this new trend where they're good, because look, it's a plastic mount, Keep that in mind if you're gonna get this. What else do we got? We've got the camera. You know, we'll get there. Oh, you know what's coming. Let me, oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. There we go, the strap, the Canon EOS camera strap for the M200. Let me know in the comments if you actually use this strap. I still, I never use the straps, and it's about 50-50 for those of you that actually end up using these and those of you that don't. So I love, I love finding out. Do you actually use the strap that comes with the camera? Leave a comment below. I never, I don't even, un, I don't know that I have ever used a strap on my camera before. Okay, so we've got this away, we've got this away. Put this down to the camera itself. I did get the silver one. It'll make the thumbnail better. Okay, well it's white then, okay. Ooh, that looks really, really good. It feels, I mean, it feels plasticky. It, it is a budget camera. It's not gonna be the, it's not gonna be made of the same material like the other higher end cameras. It does have the flip up screen and it has it like, so I like it. I know this is gonna sound weird, but I like it when the flip up screen works like this. I don't like it when there's a chance for the screen to like get blocked. So like if you've ever used the G7X Mark III, the G5X Mark II, any of those, there's like a lip here and it causes problems when you wanna like actually see what your settings are. So I like that screen. It's not bad, what do we got? We've got the SD card slot, HDMI, and looks like USB power. What I'm not seeing though, and that's kind of disappointing, is it doesn't look like there's a microphone jack on here. So if you want to use, so if you want to use this to like vlog, you'll need to get an external audio recorder, or you'll just need to learn to live with the microphones that look like they're right up there. Does it have? It has a flash. Who's ever? Also, do you ever use the flash that comes on the camera? Leave a comment below. I'd love to. I'd love to hear. But yeah, the camera feels pretty good. 
We've got the mount. You can see that nice APS-C size CMOS sensor. I'm pretty sure this is the same sensor uh, from the older cameras. I don't believe they put the sensor from like the 90D, the M6 Mark II. Those are all much more higher end cameras, whereas this is firmly in the consumer in the consumer category. So let's see if there's any power in the battery and see what we got, see what we can turn on. I do believe this can do 4K, however, comma, I also believe it's the 4K that you get from like the M50. Cancel. We got a little bit of battery, battery power. Well, thank you for that, Canon. Thank you, Canon, for finally including a camera with a battery that has a little bit of power so we can mess around with it before, uh, before the battery dies. So let's see, what, uh, nope, no thank you. Menu, okay, menu. Let's go into the standard setting. Is this not a touch screen? No, it's a touch screen. Kinda. It's not very, it's not a very good touch screen though. Okay, so we were in the standard. Just like a lot of their entry level cameras, you it's turned on to guided mode at the beginning. So you have to turn that off to get to the regular, like the regular file settings. And there's something about this screen that just like, it doesn't feel good. So let's go into movie mode. What are our options? We've got full HD. We do have 4K in 24 frames per second. So yeah, this is gonna be like the M50 if you've ever used that. Uh, it's gonna have an obscene crop. Let's see, what does the crop in 4K look like? Yeah, look at that. It's at least the one point, what was it? Like 1.7 times crop on top of that, on top of the standard thing. So we've got HD 720p in 60 frames per second. We've got full HD in 30 frames per second. So this is like the SL3. That's what this is like, not the M50. The SL3, so I use 30 frames per second, like right now we're doing in 30 frames per second, so it's not a big deal for me, but hopefully, much like their other cameras, so a lot of the, like the 90D and the M6 Mark II, they're getting the 24 frames per second mode. I think the 90D already has it, so hopefully here soon they will release that here, because you cannot do 1080p in 24 frames per second, which is disappointing, disappointing. I don't understand why they decided to do that. You do get the digital image stabilization, Okay, we've got that set up. I mean, it looks like a pretty standard. It's got everything that a normal Canon camera would have. We've got movie self timer, sound recording auto. We'll just leave that in auto. Normally I don't leave sound recording in auto, but we'll leave that here because we can't plug in a microphone. Time-lapse movie, that's nice. Exposure compensation, white balance, uh, autofocus. Yep, it does have dual pixel autofocus, which is very nice. And yeah. So it looks like the SL3 did when we used that. So let's grab an SD card and do some, let's see how it looks indoors real quick. Okay, so we grabbed an SD card and we also grabbed, I again, I don't like this kit lens. So we grabbed my 22 millimeter EFM lens. This is my personal EFM lens uh, that I use on all of these cameras because it's probably the best lens in the entire EF line. I mean, I haven't had a chance to use the Sigmas yet, and I use the Sigma, like, on my GH5 in a lot of my videos, I use the Sigma 16 millimeter. I like 35 millimeter equivalent ISO. I guess we'll keep it in auto. And then we didn't put the SD card in, and that's not where the SD card goes. I do like that even for a budget camera, though, they put the SD card, and it's probably due to the size of the body, but they put it off to the side. Okay, quick mode. Come on. Autofocus. Face. Tracking. Go. Ready? Okay, and this is the indoor image quality of the M200, and this is with the 22 millimeter EFM lens. Didn't have time to set up the audio. We've got the exact same setup that you just saw with the GH5. There you go. There's the GH5. There's the M200. Um, just from looking right here with the auto ISO, it actually looks pretty good. Um, it is a 35 millimeter equivalent lens, so it is gonna be a little bit closer, and I think it looks pretty darn good. I think it looks pretty good. The problem is gonna be though that the light is right there. There we go. This looks much better because we gotta get back from the light just a little bit. But yeah, this is the indoor image quality. These Canon EFM cameras are getting pretty darn good. Uh, you know what this looks like. I haven't had a chance to actually see it yet except on the screen. The screen I'm not yet sold on. I'm not yet sold on the screen because it looks kinda, uh, it doesn't look as crisp as a normal Canon screen does. And it also has like a weird, it has a weird feeling to it, and I, that sounds crazy, but normally Canon screens feel great and it's really responsive. We'll mess around with this. Again, this is initial impressions. We literally just took it out of the box. Uh, so let's, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna charge the battery a little bit, and then we're gonna take it outside and see how it works as a vlogging camera. See you out there. <laughs> okay, and here is the vlogging test of the Canon EOS M200. And yeah, we're just quickly out here, just giving it a quick shot again. 
there is no microphone in jack so this is the audio being recorded completely from the camera itself so hopefully it's good because we have it set to auto and yeah we are on the kit lens we're using the 15 to 45 kit lens because it does have image stabilization built into it and should give us a little more capabilities than if we're just using the 22 millimeter prime lens which though it is my favorite it makes it a little harder to vlog because you're like you're like all right up in here here Okay, this is the simulated 22 millimeter lens. Uh, but yeah, I do think the image quality is pretty good. I mean, all these Canon APS-C cameras have roughly the same image quality. It's really about some additional other features that you might want. Uh, but yeah, I think it looks pretty good. This does much like the G7X Mark III, if I remember. It has the record button that's on the flip screen, which that sounds weird, but I actually kind of like that you can do all the recording stuff from the screen itself. I don't know. It's crazy. I like it. I don't know. I like things that uh, are easier to use and that makes it really easy to use. And if you like this video, I bet you would like a video about the M6 Mark II, which is like the bigger brother of this, which has the more megapixel sensor, does 4K, has all those things that you might want if you want to kick it up a little bit from the budget camera to a bigger camera. And you can find that by clicking here. Thanks for watching.